Hey guys, John here. Today's patch is very weird. It's kind of like a pad, but it's also like a soundscape, sound effect kind of thing. So basically it sounds like this, called Corrupted Mind. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that one is kind of weird and kind of strange, so let's kind of get into this. So let's turn off some of these effects here, because there's quite a lot going on here, using actually every single slot. So let's go over to the Synth tab and kind of see what's happening here. So we're going to be using the Utility Engine, so let's turn that off for now. Let's turn Engine 2, Wavetable off, and let's go to Engine 1, Wavetable 1. So basically, we have this one here, this, this wave table called Base Morph, and if we click this, it's under Synthesizers, and it's under Base Morph. Now, I'm not necessarily using anything else but this first one, so it might, be, make, might make more sense to use this view right here, because this is the only waveform we're using right here. So what we're doing here, you can see this course kind of bouncing up and down, right? So this main knob is up 12 semitones, so one octave, and it's getting modulated by this random one. So let's take a look at random one and see what this is all about here. So we can see this is the only destination, this course tune right here. And then we go to a random tab and we see this is a sample and hold sampled from white noise and the re-trigger source is the clock. And basically what that means is it's gonna be almost a tempo mappable type of randomness. And right now we have our rate at one over 16. So that's how we're getting those fast beeps. <laughs> Now we're also using quantized pitch as well. Let's go over here to this pencil tool and make sure this blue cue is selected and select this pencil. And these blue notes in accordance with the first one is basically the notes that is allowed to hit within the range that it's allowed to move in. So that's kind of how that is happening there. And we can always just click these on and off and on and off. And that's basically how that would work there. Now aside from this, we do have a couple modulation sources that are mapped to some macros. So this first mac ma uh, macro here is effects, and we'll get into that on the effects section. And these next two, this phase mod and fold, are kind of going to be working in tandem with both of these wavetable engines. So as I increase this fold, we can kind of see this fold mod is moving up and down, right? So up and down like that, and we can kind of see that's the range it's allowed to move in. If we hover our mouse over it, we can see this 0.77, yeah, 0.77, I almost said 0.770, but yeah, 0.77 is the amount it's allowed to move in. Same with the phase mod over here, we can kind of see this moving over here, and that's 0.22. The same knobs are, are attached to the same parameters in the second wave table, just slightly different values of influence. So that's the only real difference there for the, uh, for the macros. And last up, we have this cutoff here, so we can kind of move this back and forth, and this controls actually both cutoffs here at slightly different values because I kind of make, make sure that I want them to kind of work in tandem, but not exactly the same because they're two different filters. You know, first we have a Jupiter 8 filter, and then we have the SEM filter, which are kind of acting different. So with that being said, we should look at the routing. So engine number one is going to filter number one, and this is going to be this Jupiter 8, and that is going output in a split mode. So Think of it, this first engine gets fed into the first filter, and then the first filter then gets set that's that gets sent to the first three effects banks. And same goes for the second engine, but it's going to filter two, which is this SEM filter, which is going to FX bank B over here. And the utility engine is doing the same thing as number two. So filter two out here and then to the effects on the second bank over here. So that's kind of the routing where everything's moving and going, right? And then we do have another uh LFO modulation going on over here. So let's go back to our wavetable and let's take a look under the hood and see what this is doing. So this is doing wavetable position two and then the filter two cutoff, right? So this is controlling two things. So if we go over to wavetable number two and turn this on real quick, we can see that this is slightly moving very slowly. You might be able to see it better kind of like this, right? In a 2D version. 
And this is just going free running, right? So it's not getting re-triggered every time I hit a note. It's just always moving and kind of changing the sound as things go on, which is kind of a nice thing. And a very slow rate at 0.055. There's always that change over time, that slowness that really kind of makes something come alive. Now, this is also changing the cutoff on the second filter, which this is going to. So in addition to moving this wavetable, this is also slightly moving the cutoff from this SEM filter on number two. So that's the other modulation source we have over there. So back to engine number one here, we have two voices of unison and the detune is 1.50. And we talked about these modulations here. So that's basically what engine number one is doing. And that's kind of just that, you know, that weird pulsy kind of sine wavy sound with the kind of like an arpeggio sequence thing. That whole thing. In which since it's nice, it's on one engine. If you don't like that sound and you like the other stuff, you can just turn engine one off and then just use the other stuff. That's totally cool too. It's kind of nice how it's set up like that. So engine number two, let's turn this one on, turn engine number one off and take a look at this. So we talked about how this position is getting slowly changed by this LFO one, right? So that's just holding down a note and the sound changes over time, slowly and slowly and kind of always gives something fresh to our ears. Now for the unison, this is going to be four voices of unison, detune, also 1.50. And the course tuning is down two octaves, so minus 24 semitones. Now this one has a little bit of frequency modulation at 0.116 right over here. And then the same thing as before, we are modulating the phase mod and the fold mod with macro number three and or with two and three. So two is gonna be the phase over here. Number three is gonna be the fold mod right over here, which like I said, affects both engines at the same time with slightly different values. This uh, fold mod here is 0.89 and the phase mod is 0.93 versus the other one where it was 0.22 and 0.77 so yeah that's pretty much what's going on here for going out to filter number two we already talked about this how this lfo is kind of moving that and we also have the macro four which is the cutoff moving both of these back and forth right there now we come to the utility engine so this one's kind of interesting it's more so a texture kind of thing and it's just that the vinyl old It just adds a little bit more extra harmonics. So if we have everything engaged here, and FX are still off, by the way, right? And just turn utility off. That's going to be our main sound. Then we add in the utility engine with that noise here. We can kind of hear the crackling, the uncertainty, the differences at the very, very top end of the spectrum. And it's also getting filtered here. So this filter is getting tilted 41% high pass. All right, so before we get into the effects here on the keyboard, we have a little bit of glide on always here and it's 86 milliseconds right there. Kind of adds a little bit to that vibe. And then we need to talk about our envelopes here. So our attack is 66.5 milliseconds, decay 300 milliseconds, sustain 0.736, and the release is 950 milliseconds. I didn't change the attack curve or the decay curve, I don't believe, so the attack curve is gonna be zero, and decay curve is minus four. Now let's get into the effects. So let's turn these on here, and keep in mind, all of the effects here, so FXA, we have a delay, a shimmer, and then we have the chorus and the flanger. So all of these are gonna be tied to this first macro. As you can see, as I move this, you can see these dry wet knobs kind of move in accordance with that. So if you wanna turn the effects off with one swoop, there you go, it's really not that bad. Yeah, so there's a lot of effects going on here. So let's talk about this first here. So let's turn off FX B and then go to the synth and turn off utility engine and engine number two. So right now, only thing that we're gonna be hearing is this wavetable engine one, this little sine wavy thing. That's going through that first filter, going through the effects and going through this chain right over here. So it first hits a delay and it's gonna be a dotted delay at one over eight. The fine is gonna be zero, feedback 0 0.140, stereo spread 0 0.040. The high pass, I didn't change that, is at 20. You can if you'd like to, but I did bring back this low pass at a little under 4K. Now that's pretty much this first delay. Then it goes into the shimmer reverb and this one pitch shift is up an octave. So it kind of gives you that octave rising for the tail. 
The feedback is going to be 0.5, size 63.2, modulation 1, high pass frequency 200, low pass frequency 7K, ducking is going to be 0 for this one, which you can change it if you'd like to, and the stereo width all the way to 1. And again, this multiband at the very end is kind of more so gluing this and contouring the sound because I like to squish some of those shimmers and, and delays after that to really kind of make a, like a sandwich, a squished kind of pancake or whatever you want to call it with this sound initially. Basically, I don't want that going anywhere. I want it right there, right in front of me the entire time. You might have something different. You can always turn that off or change these, uh, these bars here if you'd like to, but that's what's happening in this first engine. So back over on synth, let's turn this guy off and then let's turn two and utility engine on and kind of talk about those effects. So turn off FXA and now FXB. And if you remember, this is going to be engine number two and the utility engine at the same time. First, it runs through a multiband and then a chorus Juno 6 and then the BL20 flanger. So again, these are kind of to taste here with the multiband. I just kind of felt like this balance seemed right. And then we go into the chorus Juno 6. Which is a kind of a nice sound here. The uh, the rate's going to be 0 0.40. I believe this is default, if I'm not mistaken. The depth point or 4.44 and the phase 180. The dry wet at the maximum is going to be 29, which corresponds to this effect right here. And then last but not least, we have the BL20 flanger, and the dry wet's going to be at a maximum of 0 0.30, so 30% according to this FX knob. And these settings are going to be 0 0.250 hertz for the rate, the delay 0, depth at 1, the feedback 50%, selected on wide, and mono input is off. So with that being said, all of that together, let's turn all these back on, back to engine number 1, and we have everything going, and let's see what it sounds like all together. <laughs> Yeah, so kind of a weird patch. It's, is it a pad? Is it a, is it a texture? Is it a sequence? I don't really know. It's kind of all in one. So yeah, Corrupted Mind, if you'd like to get a copy of this patch, the link is in the video description below and it can be yours. So thank you for watching. Hope you learned something and we will see you in the next video.